This is an introduction to chromatography. Chromatography is a technique for the separation of various compounds. It can be done in a glass column, as illustrated on the left side of this slide, in which we are going to have a stationary phase made out of silica and a mobile phase or a solvent delivered through the, uh, through the top of the column via gravity. However, in addition to com uh, column chromatography, the most popular way of doing chromatography nowadays is high-performance liquid chromatography, or HPLC, in which narrow columns are packed and filled with porous particles, tiny, tiny particles, 3 micrometer in diameter or 5 micrometer in diameter. And these particles then function as the support for the stationary phase and allow the separation and analysis of the different compounds. HPLC is widely used in many fields, pharmaceutics, environmental analysis, food industry, chemical industry, clinical analysis, forensics, and many research settings cannot do their work without HPLC. The type of chromatography described in this, in this introduction is called partition chromatography. And this term is used because the analyte, such as A, distributes between the mobile phase and the stationary phase. This is an equilibrium, that is, there is a constant exchange between the mobile phase and the stationary phase of the analyte. Mathematically, this equilibrium can be described by a distribution constant, K, represented or calculated as the activity of A in the stationary phase divided by the activity of A in the mobile phase. This distribution constant is usually not explicitly calculated in chromatography. However, a related term is called the retention factor. And the retention factor, represented by the small k, is calculated as the distribution constant times the volume of the stationary phase divided by the volume of the mobile phase. Each compound, A, B, C, etc., present in the sample will have a unique distribution constant and a unique retention factor. So this principle of chromatography then requires a stationary phase which in this experiment would be based on a reverse phase. The reverse phase is made out of siloxanes. Siloxanes will have this general structure and the key feature here for having reverse phase is the nature of the R group. R could be either an alkyl chain, 8 carbons, 18 carbons, or it could be a modified alkyl chain, such as this one here in which a cyano group has been added to the, to the alkyl chain. Each of these different R groups will have the ability to partition compounds differently. For reverse phase and for more hydrophobic compounds, the C18 column or C18 reverse phase is the preferred one. This diagram illustrates the principle of separation of chromatography. A and B represent two components in the sample, which at the beginning or the entry of the column occupy a single zone. As a function of time, these two will start to move down the column carried by the mobile phase. As we can see at time zero, this is the injection time. At T1, we see that both zones, A and B, have moved down, and A is moving uh, faster than B. This is under the assumption that A is not being retained, while B has the ability to partition within or into the stationary phase. As time progresses, the separation becomes more pronounced between A and B. Finally, a reaches the end of the column, reaching the detector. This could be represented as indicated in the bottom of this diagram as a function of time. This is a chromatogram, 
so intensity or detection versus function of time, and T3 corresponds to the detection of A. At a subsequent time, time T4, B will reach the detector and then will appear as a separate band. The nomenclature to refer to these peaks is bands, peaks, or zones. Important nomenclature in describing these separation principles are the dead volume or void time corresponding to a compound such as A that is not retained at all, elution time, TR, corresponding in this example to a compound B that is retained by the stationary phase due to partitioning, and the concept of retention factor, which is defined for those compounds that are retained and can be represented by small k, which could be calculated based on the retention time and the dead time as a, uh, divided by the dead time of the uh, marker. Because the goal of, of chromatography is separation, a way to characterize the efficiency of separation is the resolution. I'm going to start this again. Sure. Because, of the, because the goal of chromatography is a good separation, it is important to have a concept or definition that helps describe efficient and effective separations. This concept is resolution. Resolution refers to the ability to detect two separate bands. In this particular example, we have bands A and B corresponding to compounds A and B. We can see that these are well resolved, well separated, because in between the two of them, there is a valley. That is, the signal goes down to the baseline. Resolution can be calculated as a function of the distance between the peaks of the two bands divided by the average width of the two bands, which all of these parameters can be determined experimentally from the times and the observations of the width of the peaks. A second concept that refers to the quality of the separation is the concept of theoretical plates. Theoretical plates are defined as the retention time of compound in this case A, divided by the width of the, of, the, of the compound, squared multiplied by a factor of 16. Each compound or zone will have its own theoretical plate number. For instance, B will be exactly the same, with the difference being that it will take into account its retention time and the width of that peak. In some instances, when the peaks cannot be fully resolved, that is A and B overlap, it is necessary to modify the such calculations and expressions. For instance, one can base the calculation of the theoretical plate on the full width at half maximum, or FWHM for A or B. The formula in that particular situation is modified to include, instead of the full width, the full width at half maximum of each of these different compounds. A third component that is important to define the quality of the separation is the concept of column efficiency, or plate height. This is calculated as the length of the column divided by the number of theoretical plates. Highly related to column efficiency, or plate height, is the velocity of the mobile phase. And all of these concepts can be better understood in terms of the equation known as the Van Dimter equation. This equation consists of several terms, A, B, C sub S, and C sub M. These terms refer to A, the multiple flow paths that uh, an analyte will find on its way through the column, B, divided by U, which is related to longitudinal diffusion, C sub S multiplied by U, which refers to the mass transfer to and from the stationary phase, and C sub M multiplied by U, which refers to the mass transfer in the mobile phase. So the ultimate goal of a highly efficient column is then to minimize H, and this is better explained by plotting this function. So here is a plot, a plot of the Van Dimter equation in which we have each of the main components, C sub S U, C sub M U, and B divided by U, plotted separately. 
as a function of the velocity of the mobile phase. And we also have the combination of this to produce h. Let's look at this plot at three different regions. The first region would be at a very high velocity. We can see that h is mainly dominated and controlled by transfer to and from the stationary phase and transfer within the liquid phase. If we now focus at their low velocities, the problem will be that it will take a long time to elute out a compound and it will be controlled by diffusion or the term B sub U. So ideally, one should try to do a separation using a velocity right here at a, at a flow rate that will provide a minimum contribution to H, which corresponds to a highly efficient separation. So putting all this together becomes uh, a common sense in terms of uh, separations. And now, if we look at the chromatograms that are the representation of these separations, we can understand these concepts a little bit better. Here we have the concept of using a separation of several compounds, five compounds, in a mobile phase made out of methanol and water, 70 and 30 percent respectively. If this mobile phase composition is kept constant throughout the separation, this is what is known as isocratic separation. Now, let's see what happens if all of a sudden this isocratic separation is changed in terms of the composition of the mobile phase. Let's go and look at the comparison of 60% methanol and 40% water. If we see now after the separation, this is the injection time, we can see that we are beginning to discern five separate compounds. Four and five are still not fully separated, and three and four, two and, two and three tend to overlap. So one could continue adjusting the mobile phase composition, and now we can clearly see the separation between the five compounds. We can even modify the, the model phase composition even more by increasing the, the, the content of water, and we can see a very nice and clearly defined separation. So what we see from this is that the efficiency of the separation defined by improving the resolution can be altered by modifying the composition of the mobile phase. There are some instances that this is not sufficient. It's important to do uh, an improvement in the separation during the separation, and for that we use gradient separation. This is a chromatogram that represents 30 different amino acid derivatives. And what is important to note here is that these 30 amino acid derivatives can be separated very nicely in the time frame of this slide. The key feature here is that during the same, during the same separation, there is going to be a change in mobile phase composition, starting here with solvent A 100% and nothing else. As time goes by, the system will change the composition of the, so of the solvent of the mobile phase until it finally reaches 100% B and no A. This is a gradient separation that allows a highly efficient separation in a relatively short period of time. In order to do an experiment, either an isocratic or a gradient separation by HPLC, the instrumentation is going to be relatively basic and simple. It's important to have different solvents. It's important to have a way to deliver the solvents through a pumping system. It's important to have a region or a way to introduce the sample, which for HPLC are liquid. And finally, the column for the separation that ultimately delivers the sample to the detector. The detector that will be used in this experiment is a UV detector. This detector is universal and can be used in almost in any of the applications in which HPLC is currently used. For more information on this technique, see the textbook Skug, Holler and Crouch, Principles of Instrumental Analysis, 6th edition.